season eight is the end of what some people term classic SG-1, yeah. right? Um, because, you know, I think I've mentioned this elsewhere, um, Brad and Robert had an idea for a spin-off called Stargate Command, which ultimately kind of became uh, SG-1's ninth and 10th seasons. Yeah, and it would structurally have basically been the same show, but branding it would have, there, there's some thought that, you know, branding it differently would have would have given it a different kind of like almost new legs with the network. Like, I don't know contractually mm -hmm. how things would have moved around, but um, it would have almost have been like, as far as, as far as the network is, is concerned, a reset with a new show. Is, is that fair or is that kind of like, no, that, really that is, case. that is fair. Um, but on the other hand, you know, I wonder if Atlantis would have come about, for instance, if we would have been doing it's true. Stargate Command. Huh. That's a fair point. Let's take a look at some of your season eight episodes. All right. So you open the season going right back to uh, picking up the pieces where we left off in Lost City. Jack's frozen down in Antarctica. Tika. And mm -hmm. uh, we've got um, Elizabeth Weir in charge of the SGC. Mm -hmm. So we went from Jessica Steen to mm -hmm. Tori Higginson. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I was expecting the story to have something like, oh, Dr. Weir, did you change your hair color? Oh, no, I just <laughs> went back to the original color. I've always been, I've always been a brunette. The blonde was just a phase. You know, some kind of like, Lant hanging a lantern, like acknowledging that there was this this um, mm -hmm. this change in cast, but you guys were like, you know what? Let's just move on with the story. Was there mm -hmm. any like um, conscious thought potentially? Let's let's acknowledge this in some way. Let's say or um, Dory always. I said, mean, any you know, any you got a new shirt. Oh, it's a nice new yeah. shirt. <laughs> no, any acknowledgement would have been just that kind of meta, um, and. Yeah, we elected uh, not to. Although, I mean, there were plenty of times when we did. I was going to say, when reason, Mala comes through but, the gate, she yes, says, yeah, I don't yeah. know you. I would remember you. Yes. So ben Browder. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just, you know, that's one of the, that's a different situation. I think that's fair because that's a sci fi series that a lot of uh, Stargate fans had watched. And so, yeah. in that specific situation, you're, you're acknowledging a, a series connection there. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. absolutely um mm -hmm. new order part one we also if, if i'm not mistaken we also bring back patrick curry in the first hour if if i'm if i'm remembering mm -hmm. correctly i think that that's the case mm -hmm. what was it like revisiting that arc from season six uh it's actually one of my favorite season um uh, season six arc, and I love the character of Fifth. Mm. Um, and just, I just kind of in general, I, I, I kind of really like the episode for its um, guest stars because I always like the uh, kind of the color of the varied system lords. So we had Kira Clavel as Am Amaterasu. We had yes. Steve Basic, who's always fantastic, uh, uh, you know, as, as Camulus. Um, you know, so you know, it, it just. It, it really felt like we went right back to kind of like the roots of the show. I mean, be, just because SG-1 was always kind of a mix of, of kind of the, the show mythology that we've grown so used to that had a lot of the kind of a serialized elements. On the other hand, a lot of the more kind of standalone um, out there episodes that really had no connection to the past. And this one had very much a connection to the past. Um, so, you know, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun in that respect. New Order in, in so many respects is, is giving birth to new content from gestating pieces over the seasons. I mean, mm -hmm. you kind of get, it's kind of a, almost a summit part two with mm -hmm. bringing in Amaterasu, you and Camulus. And mm -hmm. you also, uh, they all, you also evolve the replicators even further. Mm -hmm. Um, I know uh, uh, you were in the writer's room when they were talking about about uh, making a Carter villain. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tell us about turning uh, the, the, I mean, I know it wasn't specifically you were written by, but I mm-hmm. mean, at, at the same time, that's a big deal, you know, getting a replicator yeah. Carter. Yeah. I mean, one of the great things about sci-fi is you can always play with stuff like that, usually through uh, time travel or, you know, the road not taken or parallel universe stories where you kind of investigate our milieu or characters through a completely different lens. Uh, you know, kind of a classic bearded evil Spock. Uh, and <laughs> yes. so, you know, it's always fun to sort of do a twist, like a really warped twist on our characters. And I, I forget who came up with the idea. I'm sure it was, either, you know, Brad or Robert. Um, but I just love it. And I, I'm sure, you know, uh, I was about to call her Samantha. Uh, Amanda <laughs> loved, well, loved playing the bad guy. I think that and, that could have gone for another season. Mm, I, yeah. I think there could have been more a, mileage a great, out of that. A great big bad. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Give her some in, more insidiousness. I mean, don't get me wrong. Gemini is a, a, a great, a great script, but mm. I always felt like, you know, I, I wish that they hadn't knocked her off so quickly. Again, you know, thinking yeah. season eight, it's probably going to be the last season, right? So you're not going to leave fans yeah. hanging on this one, which, which mm-hmm. was probably the better call. Mm-hmm. So... Exactly. Um, lockdown. Mm-hmm. The return of Anubis. Which, yes. which surprised me because mm-hmm. I was like, okay, we're done with this arc. And then mm-hmm. you guys are like, no, no, we've no, had more we're have again. another yeah. season. Yeah. Yeah. What was what was uh, the nucleus of lockdown? Was that it? Um I mean, yeah, kind of. I mean, you know, as I mentioned back in, in at the end of season four, Paul and I were like, oh, you know, I don't know how we're going to be able to come up with new original ideas for um, for season five. And then we ultimately discovered that the past, the show's mythology episodes we've done before are rich fodder for new stories. And, you know, I always liked Anubis as a, as a villain. He was actually kind of one of my favorites. Um, so, you know, it was kind of fun in a way to kind of bring him back. Um, it's kind of interesting also that, uh, our guest, guest star, uh, uh, Gavin Hood, who plays our, our general went on to, I think he won an Oscar for directing, um, uh, uh, I forget what the, it was a Russian film. Oh. And he also went on to, to direct, um, one of the Marvel yeah. movies, I think it was um, like Wolverine or exactly, yeah, yeah, and um, and Ender's Game, I love. Too. Oh, right, yeah, he was great yeah. with that. Yeah, so yeah, very talented guy for sure. I would mm-hmm. have, um, I would have loved to have seen him again in some capacity. But again, it's one of those situations where you know, nope, this is it based on the needs of the story, and yeah. you know, my with lockdown. In hindsight, and I, I'm curious to see if you if you shared the thought process on that, because of where it went mm-hmm. with later in the season, him sitting on another throne. I think I think in hindsight, for me personally, narratively, mm-hmm. it would have made sense for him to successfully escape. Because when he ends up on the ice planet, yeah. it's like, okay, how did he get out of that situation? That mm-hmm. that had mm-hmm. to have been it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. he had to have had some kind of ascended help. That was the only mm-hmm. door that he could walk through, as far as I'm concerned. Well, system laws have always been a resourceful bunch. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know at the end of lockdown that you were bringing him back later on in the season? No. Okay. Well, I, well, so what was the name of the episode where we brought him back? Um, uh, Reckoning Part One. Yeah, Reckoning Part One. Yeah. No, I think at that point we did not because I think. Um, you know, we usually went off, we, we would spin the ideas for the following season, and usually we'd get up to like seven, maybe eight episodes uh, broken, and then we'd all go off and write, and then we'd come back and resume and, and, and spin. So basically at that point, uh, I think locked on, it was episode three. Yes. Um, yeah. And then I'm not sure, uh, but, but um, it was definitely in the back half. Okay. Uh, of the season, I think it was like 16 or 17. Before you go away to write the first mm-hmm. chunk, knowing that the back half is going to exist, typically on a season, would you guys have an idea of like the broader beats that you would want to hit by the end of that season, firmly placed or relatively globularly like placed 
in your mind so that, okay, we can't yeah. deal with these things now. We deliberately want to save X, Y, Z later. Yes, usually okay. we always had a pretty good idea of the overall blueprint for, for the season and where we wanted to end up. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.